Gig Gab, the show for working musicians, episode 367 for Tuesday, December 20th, 2022. Greetings, folks, and welcome to Gig Gab, the show by, for, and about working musicians. Or welcome back to Gig Gab, if you have been listening for a while. Sponsors for this episode include masterclass.com slash gig gab, where you can go and give one annual membership and get one free. And also Rocket Money at rocketmoney.com slash gig gab, where you can start saving hundreds per year by canceling all those subscriptions that you forgot about. It's amazing stuff. We'll talk more in depth about both of those in a little bit. For now, here, as usual, in Durham, New Hampshire, I'm Dave Hamilton. I'm here in Napomo, California. It's Paul Kent. Happy holidays, Dave. Happy holidays, Paul. It's nice to uh, it's nice to reconnect, my friend. It's good. We're, we're, we always find our way back, don't we? I like it. It's good. I, I When we don't do this show for a week, I miss the heck out of it. And this mm. last week, especially. I don't know why. I mean, I do know why. There's, you know, there's always stuff going on. And it's, it's, um, it's weird not playing... You know, we I had such a sort of uh, fantastic, perhaps is a good word, fall of gigs. You know, we had the those we had a bunch of great bitter pill gigs, which culminated in the two nights with Bella Spartak. We had some fantastic fling gigs, and uh, one of the, the most recent one was an acoustic gig that, gosh, it went so well. Uh, but that it's 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 weird, it, yeah. The, you know, just fling is a. Um, a, a vocal band is as much as it is anything else. And so really being able to sort of highlight the vocals and, and hear each other in, in a different way. Um, yeah, it was great. It was, it was a nice, nice sort of change up. The people that came out really liked it. Um, but it's, you know, it's weird not having like bitter pill gigs uh, on the calendar coming up. It's I, 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 I mean, I understand it. It's, you know, it's the holiday season. It's winter. Uh, we we often go into a little bit of a hibernation in the winter here, but it's it's one of those things where you know we had such a good we had such good momentum. Um, it it's it feels it's just weird not to keep going. That's all. I mean, it's you know it's not it's not bad. I don't think. It, I hope it's not bad. Um, well, you know, I have these deep feelings about momentum because yeah, same. I'm, now, I'm in the sales business. You know, we say in the uh, sales business, if you had a good morning, that's not the day to take a three hour lunch, right? Like you have a good right. morning, you keep working all day. You take a three hour lunch when business sucks, you know? <laughs> so, so same, but go ahead. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> uh Oh, did I lose you, man? My band three hours away. Oh, you, you, cut, you, yeah, you cut out for a little bit there. So start, start, start that thought anew. Would you please? That's well, the thought was, you know, I am a keen observer of momentum in that my band with me having moved three hours away and still coming back. And, you know, we still have played some really good shows last year, but we're playing less. And it feels to me like there's a side effect of the slowing the vehicle down. You yeah. Know? It's, it's, it's kind of weird. One of the side effects is, you know, my guys are getting, are getting involved with other stuff, their own stuff or, you know, other things, you know, Nick has his, his Zappa band, which has a couple guys in it. And, you know, a couple of the other guys have started some solo work that they didn't do before. And it's really created a lot of, you know, again, they're all good guys and, you know, nobody's doing anything harmful. They're just trying to book their calendar, which I totally get. Playing music. Yeah, but, exactly. Yeah. But I, I kind of have a, a philosophy in life that if you, if you do something that affects somebody else, in any way. Yeah. Be a good dude and have a conversation about it. Yes. Yeah. So. Oh yeah. That, yeah, for sure. Yeah. 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 Making it, you gotta, you gotta, uh, yeah. I mean, anytime, I mean, there's many different aspects of that. I think we can, we can dig into a few of them here, but you know, I'm, I'm reminded of when we had Kenny Aronoff on the show and, and he was talking about managing his schedule when he basically is, I don't know if it's technically a retainer, probably is, but uh, you know, he's, he's on, he's on call for Fogarty or at least was at the time and booked all kinds of other gigs. And you asked him, you're like, well, how do you manage it when you've got other gigs booked and Fogarty calls? And it's like, well, yeah, you know, he's like, you figure it out. 
like yeah, yeah okay or, okay or you don't <laughs> or you don't right but then that's you, like yeah you, you make your decisions and and the chips fall where they may right you may, you may burn some bridges kind of, you, yes there's there's going to be smolders embers somewhere uh as as things you know it's easy to say and 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 i i mostly live this way and most musicians that play in multiple projects that i know live this way which is whoever you book the gig with first is the band that you play, you know, that's it. You're now low and you are no longer available on that evening at the end of story. Right. However, there's always asterisks. And I, you know, I mentioned those, those two dates we did with Bellis Bartok. Well, the, the Saturday night, the second night that we did with them, there was a fling gig booked and we had this opportunity on the table and the fling gig was a fairly low stakes gig. It wasn't a club gig. It was a, a sort of a private, a semi-private gig that sort of we were hosting. It was far enough out that I found out about this, that we were able to move it around and it, it all, all worked out in the end, but required some, you know, it was, it was not, I hate doing that. Uh, it was the right decision. I, like absolutely. The, the, I do not regret having done it, but I, I hate, that I put myself in the position to do that. Yeah. And, and at least a few of your, in one of your bandmates, right? Yes. I, I, I had to impose on fling to, to you know, four other people and Nominate, yeah. Yeah. And the people hosting the band and the party and all of it. Like I, you know, it's, there's a huge ripple effect there. Everybody was great about it. Like, but I, I have to, you know, that to me, that has to be the exception because if you do it too often, then that's the end of that. I, well, I think so this is a great conversation because I was very consciously a jerk about, about that. Right. Okay. The whole time I was running the band, I was like, Nope, if you're in my band, if you know, if you're not available, if we're going to start this game, because what, what would happen is one guy says, well, just this one time it, it's an exception. Sure. There are nine other guys. Right. Yeah. And then you don't ever have your, your band, you know, together. If it's a, at, if it's just an at will thing as, as opposed to, you know, a real commitment. And so this is one of those things where, you know, like you and I have had some interesting conversations over the years where I give you a perspective and you go, yeah, as a musician, I just don't see it that way. You know, you like, yeah. like, you know, like, do you ask another, leader before you go and ask a guy in his band to you know to sub in your band or something like that yeah, that was a, that was a famous conversation that, that we yeah. we we never like each other's perspective was never never i mean i acknowledge your perspective i don't think it's, it's i acknowledge yours yeah. uh, yes but but I, we, we definitely don't example. see it that way yeah exactly yeah but this is an example it's like this if you want to get stuff done and you ultimately want to be successful i mean i think the thing is as a musician place your bets carefully as to who you're going to commit your time to Yes. But I think, I think, you know, like I said, if one guy in my band did it once, A, it causes some hard feelings, you know, if we had to turn down a gig because we didn't have, you know, sure. guys or didn't have the right guys. Um, B, um, it is basically, how do you say to another guy, well, you, you know, you can't take the night off. And, you know, if you have a five piece band or a six piece band or 10 piece band, you know, is it is it a commonly okay thing? And then you get to be a bunch of like when we're all, when we all happen to be available, we happen to be available. And I don't think that that's a band. I I really don't. I I think I think the value of the commitment and what that means to your teammates that you know you're willing to sacrifice something else. I but but I get it. And you know now in my new life, what I do is I hold certain weekends and I just say you know we have pretty good track record. These are the weekends I'm going to book the band. If I'm not booked 30 days out, you know, the date is free for you to do whatever you want to do. Sure. And we will see. Last year we had you know, quite a few gigs. We didn't really run up against things. But I, I do have a question for you, though. What do you feel is the etiquette of talking other business? So, you know, again, I have a leader-led band. And I'll actually start with one of the first guys that I had in my band when I first started – trombone player he had his own band that was similar but they never played he okay. wasn't very good at booking sure and he would hit up the people that i would book the booking guys like if you like this band you should see my band type of thing and i fired that guy <laughs> i was like not yeah. cool yeah not cool did, did he I, i'm assuming I, and i would i would like to I, I, might, I might say that we should bring this back as a as, as a as a 
a factor here, but I'd like to remove the factor of that you have a leader led band because I think where we're going here, it it shouldn't matter how the internal organization of your band works. I, I might we, there might be something that that you plan on bringing up that 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 changes that and and that's fine. But I I so far I'm I'm I think I'm kind of with you. I mean it doesn't I don't think it matters what the the organization structure of your band is if if somebody if the band is doing one thing wh- however whoever is doing that unless it's literally the the one person. But I, you know, if one person in the band is booking stuff and the other person somebody else starts sort of cannibalizing those bookings without and cannibalizing might not be the right term, but leveraging those relationships, maybe a better term without at the very least talking to, to, to in, in this case, you, right. You're the one doing the booking for that band. Why wouldn't he talk to you and say, Hey, I, you know, as you know, we play together in this band. I also play in another band. Would you, uh, mind introducing me to to the people here at the club like that 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 seems like like why wouldn't you just ask that question why why well, like I said, if yeah. you do something that affects somebody else exactly be cool about it and be, you know have a conversation be cool but that's yeah that's found, what i'm saying yeah i've actually found more people that are not cool about it i mean huh. you know it goes back to those discussions about band meetings and you know sometimes guys will speak up some guys guys are too nervous to do it yeah Some guy, sometimes, you know, musicians have a very, we're all free agents here perspective on things. And, um, yeah, I mean, even when that guy was doing it, there were a couple of people who didn't have a problem with it in the band. And I, and it just, just floored me. Right. You know, I, I know, I know how hard I had to work, especially in those days to get a contact and get a booking. Yeah. Like calls dropping by, you know, emails, calls dropping by, Right you know, really working hard to get into some of these places. And for some guy to just come up and, you know, say, Hey, if you like this, you really like this. I just, you know, was so offended by that. And so, yeah, that, that relationship didn't last very long. Yeah. Oh, I can, you know, I, I would have perspectives on the ethics of it all. Yeah. I, I, I would, I would agree with that for sure. I mean, like, again, why, why not just have the conversation? You know, if I, if I was the drummer in your band, and I also played in another band and I, you know, we were in a room where I thought, oh, this would be great for the XYZ band that I play in, whatever. Like, hey, man, uh, you know, I, I'm, 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 I'm working on developing a relationship here. Do you mind I- introducing me? Like, I, you know, and, and if, if you did mind, then that's a conversation that you and I would have sort of separate from that other person being in the room. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, yeah. 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 I, uh, it goes further though, because, you know, like as we were, getting better, more, more well-known, you know, a guy to say, Hey, I'm, you, you know, me because I'm the drummer in, or the, whatever it was Yeah, in the house, in, rockers. In the house rockers, yeah. you know, I guess that's factually correct. That is his resume. And you know, that, is, that is useful, but it strikes me as, well, you know, here's a good example. What happens now if this booking person, be it a club or, you know, whatever it is, has a date and, you know, you happen yeah. to be the guy who is in front of him. Like who, like this is where it gets really messy. Right. You know, cause there, I do perceive there are finite dates and, you know, finite good, good dates. Sure. Um, and so, you know, once you start competing internally in your band, you know, have you ever been in that situation? Like, like, like I've been in it a few times over the course of the house rockers and I have a few stories to tell, but I'm curious, have you ever been in that situation where, you know, some guy has woken up one day and decided, Hey, you don't own me. I can do what I want. And sure. Not you no, I, I, can, I can do what I want. I have, I, there's one instance in particular as, as I know, you know, and, and I think most of our listeners know, but I, I generally try not to be the person in charge of booking gigs in the bands that I'm in. I, I, I do other jobs. I, in the bands, I'm happy to help in other ways, but I, it's just, I don't enjoy that part of it. I don't mean to say that it's an enjoyable job. It's a, it's a tough job. And I'm ever so thankful for all the people in the bands that I play in who do that job. Uh, but I generally don't wind up in that role. I wind up in other roles. Uh, however, occasionally I do wind up in that role. And, and you know, the, the, this old rail pizza place that I play a bunch, uh, the guy, Albert runs several clubs and I did not, I was not the one 
that that forged that relationship. I, I, I'm 99% certain it was Johnny D in Monkey Fist slash Chafed who, you know, got us in for the first time there. And, you know, I am a, I'm, I'm a personable person when, especially when I'm in a club with somebody, I'm going to be nice to them. You know, if I arrive first, I'm Dave from, you know, Monkey Fist, I'm happy to be here. What do I need to know about the logistics? It, you know, those sorts of things. I, I, I it's, I, I just polite, you know, and over the years and pretty quickly, I would say Albert and I got to know each other and, and there was one moment and, and, and John did sort of open this door, but even still it, it, it created for me a weird vibe, but no one else ever had an issue with this. But for me, it did. John was like, Oh, you know, Dave plays in another acoustic thing at the, at that point, three of us from fling were doing some acoustic gigs and, and he's like, you should get those guys in here. And so we did. And that was great. And that was blessed by John, you know, which was perfect, right? It all worked out. No problem. But then Albert just started calling me and saying, Hey, I've, I've got, you know, instead of calling John and me, he just started calling me and he's like, Hey, I've got this date. And I'm like, great. What band do you want? And he's like, whichever one you want to bring. I'm like, Oh, well crap. Now, <laughs> now this puts me in a little it's bit. Not of your a, place. Yeah. yeah. This is a little bit of a pickle. And, and so what I did was I told Albert that I'm like, well, this actually puts me in a little bit of a pickle, man, because you know, I play in these two bands. Um, which one do you like better? What works better for your club? And I, I think he had held back a little bit cause he didn't want to offend anyone. He's a nice guy, but he's yeah. like, it, once I told him, I'm like, look, you know, I, I need to dance carefully here and explain why he's like, and he's, he's a business owner as well. You know, he gets it. And he was like, oh, okay. He's like, actually, I, I think monkey fist works a lot better than the acoustic fling thing. And I was like, great. Then I will bring monkey fist in. If you want me to bring acoustic fling in, just tell me I can do that too. But, you know, I want to respect everything that went on here and, and it is your club. So you get to pick, you know, and, and he did. And it was like, great. Thanks so much. You know, appreciate it. All good to go. And everything was fine. And I, so, so yes, I have found myself in that scenario and it's, it's tricky because like you said, the night is now, at least in that moment was mine to decide. And I was like, oh man. Like this is not Sophie's choice. It's Sophie's choice. <laughs> exactly. So I punted, but I did it in a, in a, well, in a way that I didn't have to make Sophie's choice. Did I, didn't I, 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 I but what would you do if, uh, you know, you have this relationship with university of New Hampshire mm -hmm. and they know you play drums and you get a call. Someone doesn't know your different bands. They just know you, Dave, yeah. I heard you're, you're a drummer. Uh, we're having a party, good money, bring your band. What would you do? Yeah, uh, I've I've had yeah, those I've well, had those phone calls too from uh, it, uh actually one was the University of New Hampshire and and another was the town I live in. Uh I wound up, you know, I wound up forging these relationships again, you know, sort of over the years and I I what I do is I ask, especially when it's that kind of thing where it's been a little while or I've never played but you know, they find me, then it's like I start asking the questions. What are you looking for? What's the gig? And then I pick what I think is the best band that I play in to serve the purpose that the customer is asking me for as best I can. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Because I, I want them to want to call me again, regardless of, of what band I'm playing. And I, I want to, you know, I want to deliver on what they're expecting. So it's like, what are your expectations? What are your desires? Let me find the right band. And there was one point I where I couldn't get the band, like the, of the bands I played in, the, I couldn't get the band that was going to be right for this. So I referred it to someone else and they were happy about that. They were like, great. Thank oh, you. Cool. Yeah. So again, you're, you're kind of like, you know, Mr. Ethics about this type of stuff. So you, you're probably the worst person to talk to, but <laughs> have you ever had, have you ever had a, a bandmate say, Hey, I see your book Saturday night at a, at a, at a thing. Um, and I know you have some relationship there. Is there any reason you didn't, you didn't ask us to do it? I think so. I, I, yeah, probably. And I, and I've I probably had a conversation very similar to the one I just explained to you, which was like, yeah, this is why that band's there, not this band. And, and quite frankly, that's part of why I, I, and again, I don't find myself in this scenario a lot, but, but it has happened, you know, a handful of times over the last 15 years here in New Hampshire, certainly. And I, part of the reason I do it that way is so that I can look everybody in the face and, and just tell them, yeah, look, this is how this is how it went down. This is why it went down this way. I, you know, I feel good about it. If you don't, please tell me, 
and uh, you know, maybe, yeah. maybe I handled it wrong. Here's what they told me. Here's what I chose. And I've had times where they're like, well, you know, th th this band, whatever, you know, band a could have done this just as well as band B. And here's why it's like, well, yeah, you know what? All right. I, uh, either I agree with that or I don't. And uh, you know, go from there. But. You know, and the thing is, it's all good until it's not right. Yes. I mean, I mean, you, you would give a very logical answer to it and, you know, just say, Hey, and if it's, you know, if it's a problem, let's talk about it. And, you know, hopefully the next one I can bring to this band or whatever it be. But what I find is disaffection spreads rapidly. Oh yeah. Yeah. And it doesn't mean just because I'm logical and, and convincing myself that I'm doing the right thing so I can sleep at night. It doesn't mean that everybody else is going to be happy. By any stretch right. of the imagination. <laughs> right. yeah. 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 Again, I just say, you know, if you do something in life, not just in a band, and it has either a direct or indirect effect on someone else, have a conversation, you know, talk it out. And again, I, I find most people can take bad news or news they don't want to hear or something that doesn't work for them. But they, you know, the the magnanimous approach to saying you know you your relationship is worth something to me so i feel like i feel the need to sit down with you about this that usually is the more powerful emotion that goes on in these types of things in my opinion usually yeah but again it, it if someone is really bent out of shape about it it, it you know it it's harder to, if the bridge is already on fire then yeah. it's, it takes more effort yeah to put it out all right, first up, I get to talk about Masterclass. With Masterclass, you can learn from the world's best artists, icons, and leaders anytime, anywhere, and at your own pace. For, for example, you can learn songwriting from John Legend. It, like, this is amazing. You can improve your cooking skills with a class from Gordon Ramsay. You can learn the art of interrogation from a former FBI interrogator, this songwriting class with John Legend, this is really cool. Like, it, And the cool part is, uh, about all classes, this one included, is that it's not necessary to sit down and consume the full class start to finish, right? They, they break them down into these like 10 to 15 minute segments so that you can listen and watch whenever that works, right? But this class with John Legend, I checked this out. And he talks about a lot of different parts of it. For me, where it really gets interesting is towards like the back half of it, where he talks about, look, you know, he, he has this one whole segment about becoming a promiscuous collaborator where he talks about how, he, you know, some of his best work is done working with other people. And like that really rang true to me. I mean, I I've done a lot of great stuff in my life. I I've only written like really the one song, but that's okay. Maybe that'll change. Right. You know, but um, most everything that I've done that of any substance has been collaborated with other people. And so it was like, all oh, right, like the things that resonate with you. It's amazing stuff. You got to check it out this holiday. Give the perfect gift of an annual masterclass membership and get one free. Go to masterclass.com slash gig gab today. That's masterclass.com slash gig gab. Terms apply. And our thanks to masterclass for sponsoring this episode. Next up is rocket money. Paul, you said it best last time we talked about this. They are doing yeoman's work. We're all out there wasting money on subscriptions, right? You know, 80% of us have subscriptions that we have forgotten about. Maybe it's, you know, for you, it's that unused Amazon Prime account or maybe a Hulu account that never gets uh, streamed. You know, like it's easy to sign up for stuff and then death by a thousand cuts, right? Like we're just spending all this money. I talked recently about wanting to cancel a Wall Street Journal subscription. It's a pain in the neck. They make you call them and you got to go through the whole. No, Rocket Money solved that for me. This is why I love using Rocket Money, formerly known as Truebill. It shows you all your subscriptions in one place and then cancels whatever you don't still want. Rocket Money can even find subscriptions you didn't even know you were paying for. You might even be double charged for one. To cancel a subscription, all you do is press cancel and then Rocket Money takes care of the rest. Get rid of useless subscriptions with Rocket Money right now. Go to rocketmoney.com slash giggab. Seriously, it could save you hundreds per year. That's rocketmoney.com slash giggab. Cancel your unnecessary subscriptions right now. Where? Rocketmoney.com slash giggab. And our thanks to Rocket Money for sponsoring this episode. Hey, so Paul, we got a note from listener Rob about uh, sort of in response to one of the things we were talking about last episode about 
finding upcoming shows and and helping your fans or your would be fans finding your upcoming shows. And he says, I hear about upcoming shows using bands in town. Uh, you can find that at bandsintown.com or bands in town is an app that you can install on your phone. He says, you can follow artists that you like if they're registered in the app and update their calendar. He says, I don't use Facebook. It's awful for many, many reasons and only getting worse. He says, uh, ne never been much of a Twitter user either. And I don't plan to start now. So at this point, I'm only using Instagram and bands in town. And I asked Rob, so this was fascinating to me. Uh, I asked Rob if he's using it to promote his band or if he's just using it to find other bands to see. And he says at the moment, he's using it just to find other bands to see that his band is just now starting to play again after COVID lockdowns. And so he says, once they get a more regular calendar going, he will start using bands in town. Evidently it's, it's free to promote all your stuff on bands in town. You can, well, it's free to post your stuff. If you want to sell tickets on bands in town or uh, promote your stuff via sort of a, you know, sponsored promotion or paid promotion, you can certainly do that. That's how they make their money. But the, sort of basic features of just putting your band out there and putting your gigs and your calendar in there is free, which is smart for them because it obviously creates a user base. So yeah, I think, I think there's no reason we shouldn't be using bands in town. Uh, so I've been aware of that app and I, and my yeah. perspective was, it was, I, I remember I did that survey and overwhelmingly 99 might even be a hundred percent of the people said, they use Facebook as their way to find out about stuff. So but you did the survey on they, Facebook. Yeah. I did the survey to ask is, is yeah. Facebook your primary way to find out about bands? Yeah. And that and still so blows my, me away that, that yeah. like that's different from two years ago or three years ago, whatever, like Facebook was not the place to find bands to see. And now it really is a good place to find bands to see it's, which is fascinating. But my perspective to me. about the bands in town thing was that it like would, would an average casual music fan, looking for a night out to see a cover band, you know, have an app, get, get an app, sign up for an app, you know, search it for you. I mean, yes, it's skewed. I have an audience that's been built on Facebook. So sure. obviously they're on Facebook, but, yeah, yeah, right. but I, I wonder, you know, like even Rob is a musician, you know, he listens to us. And so it always seemed like it was more of a, a musician's community. I get that. I get that the function of it is for a, is for a live music lover consumer but um i it just it didn't seem like they would have critical mass of people there when there are instagrams and you yeah know, which are going to be on for other reasons anyway no i get what you're saying i i have and i you know the, the plural of anecdote is not data and my anecdote is limited at best anyway but i have bands in town has alerted me to events of bands that I would want to see and I don't have the app on my phone and I don't know how they found me. Like I never signed up at bands in town specifically. I, I think where I got hooked up with bands in town was I was f following or, you know, checking out a, a band that I know about. And they said, if you want to be updated about our upcoming gigs, click here or whatever, and that's what subscribed me to bands in town. Cause they were just using bands in town as their, as sort of their engine. And I think once I had signed up for enough bands that way, sort of, you know, I don't want to say unintentionally, but una unaware that I was doing it in bands in town. Now bands in town, it started to build a little profile about Dave, you know? Yeah. Right. And, and so I get alerts from them, email alerts from, for bands that I, I don't know about, but, sound interesting to me. So like there might be something to it, e even if it's just a little bit, it's free. Right. So what's the harm? As long as there's no huge hurdle to putting your calendar out there, seems like maybe like why, not? I guess the question would be, why not? I'm just, we want to do another thing, you know, yeah. do, do you want to be everywhere? And I think that that would be the question. And is it worth your time? Yeah. I think when I signed up for Vans and Town, when it first came out, there was another the house rockers that was on there and it had a hard time oh. figuring out that it's two different bands with two different I, yeah. I just remember I had some login problems and then I just kind of you know gave it a quick yeah. yeah. back and look at it again. Yeah. Because I like like you, 
they're doing something right where they're crawling and, you know, I'm aware of it, even though I don't have the app and, you know, things show up for me. I get alerts in some places. And so it is kind of interesting, but, um, yeah, they're, they're doing yeah. something, I, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I, maybe I'll reach out. Well, I always tell people when we talk about them on the show, so we'll, we'll see if, if maybe they want to talk about why, why their service is, is better than we think. Uh, cause that would be interesting. Speaking yeah, of absolutely. stuff that's better than we think, you know, we're all using these digital mixers now. And I've mentioned I'm using the Mackie, uh, the DL 32 S, which has been fantastic for us. And I have one concern slash complaint with it. And that's that they put a really, really crappy Wi-Fi chip in it. It's one band of 2.4 gigahertz only. And that can very easily get lost in a club where there's lots of Wi-Fi, especially if you're in the middle of a city or something. And so I do keep a spare router with me, you know, in the, uh, in my sort of just in case, uh, that I carry around, but it's a pain in the neck to set that little router up. And it, that there's, that's a 10 minute process that in a setup of a gig, depending on how much time you have might be an issue. And there was one gig where recently where my iPad didn't want to connect to the mixer. All I, I solved it by turning off the mixer, turning it back on, it probably found a different Wi-Fi channel. Everything was fine for the gig, but I was like, okay, I was on that fence of, do I just set up the the spare router and go down that path? But I thought after I got home, I was like, wait a minute, my mixer has an ethernet port on it. If I had my laptop with me, I could plug my laptop in directly and, and bypass the need for Wi-Fi, right? Just connect. Yeah. I thought, well, wait, 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 they make lightning to ethernet adapters for the iPad. What if I just get one of those? So for 20 bucks, I have, I got, and I put a link in the show notes to the one that I have, uh, a lightning to ethernet adapter. The one I chose to get has a lightning port on it as well. So you could charge the iPad, you know, even though the lightning port's used, it's got like pass through charging and a little okay. ethernet port on it. And I tried it with my mixer. I haven't had to use it in a, you know, crunch scenario, but I tried it with my mixer and it was just boom. It no, I didn't need to spend 10 minutes like rejiggering things and setting up the router and moving things around or anything. It's just like plug this in and it's good to go. And it's a hundred percent going to work because it's connected via ethernet. And so that now lives not in the just in case, but it lives right in the bag with the mixer so that I always have it right at the ready along with an ethernet cable. Cause it would suck to have this little adapter, your iPad and no ethernet cable. That would be awful. <laughs> so I, anyway, I share this because for $19 on Amazon. Oh, look, there's a 10% off coupon today. So you could save a little bit of money. For less than $19 on Amazon, you can take your headaches away. So there you go. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Um, we're on this while we're on the subject of etiquette and being in multiple bands, but really just the etiquette at gigs. I, I, I and you and I have had this conversation online or online on the show offline off the show over the years what about announcing gigs at gigs i always get freaked out when i'm playing a gig and one of my bandmates starts announcing our next gig at a different club i like i it's it, like it even just like the idea of announcing another gig always it's just like, oh man, this could just go it's wrong. Poor taste. It, it could, it could go wrong in so many ways, right? Most of the time, it does not. But you know, I, I, I've certainly been in that scenario where it's like, yeah, you know, we're yeah, we are playing next week somewhere else. I don't know that using the microphone in this venue and and telling people not to come here next week, which is effectively how that could be interpreted by the right. club. And it depends on the club and it depends on the vibe and all of that. But I guess it's, it's just one of those things that should not happen off the cuff a announcing any kind of gig, like, it, you know, and I'm talking about just announcing the same band somewhere else. That's bad. I I'm, I'm always happy to announce and we'll be back here in four weeks on whatever, you know, like that works great because th there's very little risk <laughs> of, of, you know, burning a bridge, so to speak. But, um, but any other kind of gig announcements, and especially if like, 
I, well, I mean, you know, I play in multiple bands. I know you've got guys that play. You, you actually, you, you have multiple bands, and then you've got guys in your band that play at multiple bands, play in multiple bands. What, what, what do you think about this, man? I think a lot of things about this. So I, agree. <laughs> I, I bet you do. I think, <laughs> I think it's just in poor taste, you know, to pr- take people out of, you know, promote the idea of someone leaving your hosts, you know, your employers place of business for something else. There's so many ways for you to say, Hey, we've got some cards up here or we have right. some calendars up here. There's a lot of ways to do it without calling out. We're going to be, you know, down the street at competitor X or in the next town at competitor Y. Right. Yeah. And so right. I mean, there's I other think, ways of doing it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. 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 And even if you ask, you know, is it cool if we promote our next gig? Well, that's certainly you, better. I mean, it's better, but you, you know, someone may out of awkwardness, you know, not want to be a dick and, and just say, yeah, sure. But not actually not be too happy with it. And then you you know can create some hard feelings. So you want to do everything you can to keep your booking relationships as happy. That that's, that's really high up on the list of, of things you want to do. Keep, keep your business relationships pure. And so good communication is one, but you know, being smart about it is another, like I said, there's so many ways for you. I mean, you know, I always told you that you gave me one of the best pieces of, of running a band advice about working your breaks and going up and meeting people and that type of thing. And, you know, sometimes people put uh, coasters down, that type of thing. Yeah. Right? You can do that. I mean, again, if it's approved by the venue and right. if your website's on it, people will find how to get to your next gig. So the next you know, gig. Well, know as, as long as you, you have, it, you. as long as you have it on your website, which is a whole other conversation, which you should, but <laughs> you know. Yeah. yeah. But, and what people probably want is to know if, how to follow you more than they want to know how to get to your very next gig. Yeah. And like I, they want to know how to find you when they want to find you. Yeah. I, let's, let's, let's dive down this path a little bit because when I think, you know, there's, there's the, the, the phrase that we've all heard before, you know, strike while the iron's hot, right? The iron is hottest, not next week when someone is sitting on their couch trying to decide if they're going to put on, you know, take off their sweatpants and go out for the night. The iron is hottest when that person gets home from your gig and puts on their sweatpants, but isn't ready to go to bed yet, right? They got a little bit of a buzz, maybe. Hopefully they drove home safely, but they had a good night with your band. And that's when they might go online and be like, I want to know more about, I want to see pictures from tonight. Maybe I'm in them. Right. Like that's often how that starts. Right. And then it's what else can I find? What can I sink my teeth into about this band? This is why I started putting set lists for every band that I play in online. I try to do it the night, like when I get home so that people can find it. But even if they can't find the set list from tonight yet, which is totally reasonable, they might be able to find the set list from your last four gigs and be like, oh, that's interesting. Here's how they did that. Oh, that's cool. I like that. You know, something to sink their teeth into because that's what's going to get them to come to the next gig. Or that's what's going to get them to go and listen to your music maybe and then maybe realize, oh, they don't actually make any money when I listen online. I should buy their record. You know, like all of those things are going to help you. And then, yes, they will wind up at your next gig. But strike while the iron's hot. So, yeah, driving them to your website is probably better than just telling them about some date in the future that they're almost certainly not going to put in their calendar at that moment. That's my TED Talk. Thanks for coming. I, I agree with you. That you, you have the most love with them after you've just given them a really good time. <laughs> and it falls off the hill rapidly. You know, <laughs> I, by the next morning, that, that good feeling is diminished by at least half. <laughs> I that one phrase taken out of that one sentence of yours taken out of context would be fantastic. I think. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Anyway, but yes. So, but anyway, announcing gigs. I, I you have. I, I don't want to lose our our thought train on this, even though I definitely have derailed it. So, uh, thought thought like, do you announce your next gigs? Do you announce gigs with other bands that you play in? Like, what if somebody else announces a gig with another band they play in? Like, what what do you like? Thoughts about that? Yeah. I, I'm putting you on the spot here. I realize. I think a lot of people do, especially if you have a special thing coming up, like yeah. we have a big gig coming up. You know that that would where be where the gravity would draw you. You know to want to make sure that there's awareness of that. Yeah. But again, to to basically say we'll be at competitor X. You know, it is I think it just opens you up for for bad feelings with your employer. Uh, yeah. Well, what about with your bandmates? I mean, like, how, how would you feel? I think I know the answer to this. Um, 
But how would you feel if, uh, you know, I was your drummer and maybe not into the microphone, but, you know, on set break, I just was running around. Hey, you guys should come, you know, tomorrow night to a different club. I'm playing with a different band. Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, that's the same thing as, you know, what I was talking about before about, yeah. you know, you're basically trying to promote your band on someone else's time. And the question is, is it, is it, is it someone else's time? I, I think just good manners says, yes, it is someone else's time. When you're there, you're there to work, you know, in the guys under the premise of which you were hired. Yeah. And if you're promoting something else, that's, and I just, it doesn't, doesn't seem cool to me. It just seems destructive. Cause if you have, if you have seven guys, eight guys, five guys, 10 guys all doing that, what a message about how important that band is. And, and when people say, well, that wouldn't happen. But the thing is it, it, if you said, yeah, everybody go ahead and promote your band. What message does that send? You know? Yeah. What's about, that's a great question. The what's the message to the people that are hearing this on set break? You've got, you know, 10 people promoting six different bands. Let's say, I mean, it could be promoting 12 different bands, yeah. but you know, I, what, like, yeah, what's that? Like, who is, what? Uh, this is just a loose collection of these people aren't promoting themselves. That's weird. You know? Yeah. I never thought about but it. Even if your way. band is, yeah. as if your band is, you know, we only play occasionally and it's just a good thing where a bunch of friends get together. That's what I, I get, I get that. Yeah. But you know, I think it's all intertwined and, and you know, for me, my band, my band is still an ongoing concern. I am actively trying to book it and I will make that three hour drive. And if a good paying gig comes up, I'll make the three hour drive for a one off. Right. And I've demonstrated that that is my commitment to doing that. Yeah. But you know, if, if, if guys work my contacts to create business for themselves and not for us, I, I just don't think that's right. Yeah. 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 And, and those contacts are the fans too. I mean, yeah. and, 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 and there's, there's certain, it, it's the, the line is not, the line's somewhat blurred, right? Because it's possible that someone came out, you know, if it's someone who came out to see, your bass player, right. And, and is friends with your bass player came to see the house rockers because they know your bass player, your bass player telling them, Oh yeah. And by the way, I'm playing with another band tomorrow night. That's very different than your bass player going up to someone they've never met before and leveraging a house rockers gig and saying, I'm playing with someone else tomorrow night. Right. Like, I mean, there's, it, it's not, it's not, you know, black and white. It's it, it, there's, there's nuances there. I, I think it's, I think there are, there are, there are nuances there. I don't know that they are important very different. nuances. Yeah. I, I, I say it's, it, it is situationally different, but again, you have to scale that concept. You know, if every, everyone brought somebody to the gig, cause usually everyone in a band brings somebody. And then if they spend their time talking about the next thing or another thing or a different thing that they're doing, Hey, I just think it's a, it's a, watering down effect of the, of the yeah. specialness of the band that's there that you that you're there to see and play with and it's just you know it's you're just not, you're not wrong i'm not i'm yeah this is not a conversation that we're going to argue about it strikes me as bad manners yeah 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 for sure yeah i, I yeah i got I, i'm not, I hope, like I said, I I'm not gonna get, argue with you been on a roll lately getting getting a lot of emails and getting a lot of you know feedback about stuff i i Whenever we talk about like the social constructs of bands, it is fascinating. Because, like I said a couple of weeks ago, clearly I'm wrong about stuff a lot, and I'm well, oh, same. <laughs> I'm open to that now, but you know, being a good dude, I think you know I prioritize that in my life and in my band. And so, you know, if you if you do something that affects somebody else directly or indirectly, have a conversation. Yeah. Yeah. As soon as possible, it, you know, it's, it, it's always best. Feelings are hurt. Yeah. yeah. It's always best to have that conversation before you do the thing that might affect somebody else I, that I'm not a perfect person. It turns out, Paul, I, I've learned this. What? I know, what? I know, I know, I know. Uh, and so sometimes I do things that, you know, make me look like an asshole because I'm, I'm an asshole. Like, you know, like, like we all are at some level. I have not witnessed this. Well, maybe you have, I don't know, but you know, once you realize, Oh, I did a thing that made me look like an asshole. Well, now I'll, now is the time to go talk to somebody about that. Like it's, it's still okay to go and say, Hey, I did a thing. It wasn't cool. Let's talk about it. I want to, yeah. you know, like it's okay. Yeah. Or, or even if you say like, I did a thing, I think 
this may affect you or you may have some feelings about it. I'm, I'm not going to change what I do, but I just want to make sure that we at least have the conversation, at least look each other in the eye and understand who we are. Yeah. And if it's the type of thing that we can't get over, then better to know that now in a civil conversation than when, you know, emotions and anger and jealousy and, and all sorts of things build up and it becomes something else. Yeah, it's, it's I'm going to assume most people. Yeah. The, yeah. The festering so, sucks. Yeah. 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 Because it turns into something else. It turns into all your all your unaired grievances at some point in time. <laughs> I mean, this is and the week of Festivus the, you know, that we have this massive <laughs> holiday this week. It is, you know, and so the airing of the grievances, but don't yeah. save them for this week every year. You know, I, it's best to, I, I've found it's best to share them when you have them. Um, I agree. You know, or maybe best to share them after tw- having them for 24 hours, because you know, there's that initial emotional, like I'm super pissed. Yep. And, yep. and then it's I like, like let me process this for a day. And now let's have a conversation. Yeah, that's right. I I, agree I, with that. Yeah. Again, I don't, I get this wrong all the time, but yeah. you know, you know, I'm, I've there's learned, I've learned what I'm supposed to Twitter. do. What's that? There's this guy I follow on Twitter. He's a behavioral psychologist really, and he was writing, you know, these really thoughtful long threads of, you know, how our political landscape was shaped relative to the chemistry of the human brain. Okay. And I sent him a note and I said, well, you know, you have such a clear understanding of it. You know, how do we get out of it? He goes, if I knew that I would be more successful in my own relationship. (laughs) (laughs) Right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's, it's, it's easy to be an observer. Uh, but yeah, yeah. (laughs) Sometimes though, it's be- it, like, it is important to, as best we can observe ourselves and, and, it, you know, check yourself. Ch- yeah. Self, self-awareness is, is, uh, I think Bless. one of the most important skills I can develop. I don't want to say anything about anybody else. I, it's not my job to tell you what no. to develop for you or, and I mean, I don't just mean you, you. Paul, I mean, our listeners too, yeah. but for okay. me, self-awareness, you know, yeah, yeah. I'm working on it, man. This show helps. Doing this show helps. Very much. all a work in progress. We are a work in progress. If you've got anything to share about our work in progress, feedback at giggabpodcast.com. And then if you have anything to share about your work in progress, we have another email address for you. Feedback at giggabpodcast.com. Send those things in. Tell us what we missed. Tell us what you want to add to the conversation. We'd love to hear from you. You got anything else to add, man, before we, uh, just want to wish you your beautiful wife. And, you know, I know your daughter won't be with you this mm. Christmas, but your, your son will be right. Yeah. Yeah. Lucas is here with us and, uh, yeah, our daughter's living in Italy now, but you know, we're all together in, uh, in spirit. It's all in good. Spirit. Yeah. It's like, we'll she's doing well, what happy she's holidays to the Hamiltons and happy holidays to the Kents, man. I hear you've got, uh, you've got people that have been added to the family that are going to be at, at Christmas this year. And that's really you know, exciting. My grandson man. will be. My six-month-old grandson will be with us, so it's that's really so exciting cool. to have everybody together. Yeah, it's that's be great. so cool. Congratulations! That's awesome. Thank you, bro. That's awesome. I hope you have a great, uh, great holiday weekend. We'll, uh, I think, the next time we're kind at the moment, we're sort of on a every two week thing. We're gonna work that out, but, uh, but yeah, I think the next you have time a crazy holiday schedule. Yeah, it's crazy holiday schedule. But this uh, next time you'll hear from us, we might be saying Happy New Year to you. But uh, and to everybody out there in listening land, thank you guys for being with us throughout this year and all the years. And and uh, we wish you guys super super happy holidays and peace, health, and happiness. Yeah, absolutely. I couldn't have said it better myself, so I won't. Thanks, folks. Oh, though. and wait, always be performing too. That's the one. That's the most important. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe not the most. Yeah. Good advice. <laughs>